Hello everyone and welcome again to a short stop with a short stop. This marks a one year anniversary of a short stop with a short stop. We, this will be the 51st episode. Uh, it's not the 52nd because Zach and I went to Peru for a week and we didn't do a uh, short stop with a short stop that week. But today is the 51st uh, episode of short stop with a short stop and I wanted to talk a little bit today about heaven. If you ever watched the movie Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner, uh, he said in the movie, you know, build it and they will come. And, you know, he, he built the baseball field and uh, a lot of ex-Major League Baseball players that had already passed away was coming out and playing on the field. And one day, uh, Kevin Costner's father came out during the movie and they wanted to play catch with each other. And after they played catch with each other, the father asked Kevin, he said, is this heaven? And Kevin just looked at him and smiled and said, no, this is Iowa. Heaven is real. And Jesus said he was going to go and build a place. In John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, I'd like to read for you. He said, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you myself. And where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, how do we know where you are going? How do we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by me. And Jesus has gone to build a place that we can go and literally be with him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, it says that the beauty of it is going to be indescribable. Now that, that paints a picture in my mind where Kevin Costner's dad asked, he said, is this heaven? It's some place that we cannot even really comprehend exactly what it's going to be like. But we know that it's going to be absolutely awesome. In Revelation 21 verses 1 through 4, it says there's not going to be any more pain. There's not going to be any more tears. There's not going to be any more death. And there's not going to be any more sorrow. It's going to be a place of just sheer happiness. In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9 through 11, it says it's going to be a place for the, where the weary can rest from their labor. It's also going to be a place of godly inhabitants because God is going to be there with us. In Revelation 21, 3, it says God is going to be with these people and we're going to be singing. And we're going to be singing songs uh, for God and worshiping Him 24 hours a day. Well, again, there's not going to be a day. <laughs> but it's going to be a place that is going to be forever. Is this heaven? Well, that's a place that we all want to go and we all want to be. But here, here I want to go. But the thing about it is, is I want everybody else to go too. I want you to go. I want me to go. I want every single person in this world to go to heaven. I don't want anybody to go to the other place that God has prepared. And we need to look at that for a second. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, it says, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many that enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow, that leads to life, and there be few that find it. And that's a sad thought to me. Uh, if we look back in, in the Old Testament, uh, we look at Noah's building the ark. How many people were saved when God destroyed the world the first time? And there was only eight. It was Noah and his wife and his three sons and their, their three wives. But God says that there is a gate that we need to, to walk through, and it's, it's going to be a narrow gate. 
and it takes obedience and it takes a lot of guts, uh, a lot of intuitive trying to read the Bible and see what God wants. And that, that's what we need to do. We don't need to try to have a, a faith that somebody tells us what we need to do. We need to study the Bible, see what it says, and apply it to our lives. But also in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye who practice lawlessness. Wow. That's another sad statement to me. If we're not being obedient and doing what God says, there is another place that is going to last forever also. And it's a place called hell. And it says that there's going to be many that go there. And there's only going to be few that go to heaven. We want to be one of those few. And God never lies to us. And it's a strong statement what He says there. We need to get to heaven. That's where we want to go. That's where we want to get our family, our kids, our wives, our husbands, our grandkids, our great-grandkids. We want to make sure that we go to heaven and try to take as many people with us as we possibly can. And God gives the instructions on how to get there. And He says that we need to hear the Word of God. He said we need to believe it. We need to repent of our past sins. We need to confess Jesus before men. And we need to be baptized for the remission of sins to come into contact with the blood of Christ. And that's how we enter the church. And then we live our lives the way He wants us to. And then we can be in heaven. And it's going to be a place that's undescribable. It's been built. And, but the question is, will you come? And I hope that you do. We love you. And thank you again for watching A Short Stop with a Short Stop.